Okay, welcome back guys to another video from CXC Mad Tutor. So in this video, we'll be looking at the New York State uh, Common Core Regents uh, Geometry, August 2019 past paper. And we'll be looking at questions 13 to 18. All right, so that's questions 13 to 18 from the New York State Common Core um, Regents Geometry. Um, August 2019 past paper. All right, and um, so question 13, is it in the quadrilateral QRST, um, diagonals QS and RT intersect at M, which statement would always prove that quadrilateral QRST is a parallelogram? All right, so for this one I get um, choice three. All right. Um, so if you take some quadrilateral, if we take some quadrilateral um, Q, R, S, T, and the diagonals Q, S, and, and um, R, T, intersect at M, all right, which statement would always prove that quadrilateral Q, R, S, T is a parallelogram. So I said that Q, R is going to be congruent to TS, so the diagonal, uh, so for example, not, not, not the diagonal, but QR, this side here, QR is going to be congruent to TS, and QT is congruent to RS. All right, so that's what happened in a uh, parallelogram. The opposite sides are congruent and parallel to each other. All right, okay, so the answer for question 13 is choice three. All right, let's move on to question 14. So the standard size golf ball has a diameter of 1.680 inches. The material used to make the golf ball weighs 0 0.6523 pounds per cubic inch. What is the weight to the nearest hundredth of, a, of an ounce of one golf ball? All right, so this is a density question. All right, so remember density is equal to the, um, the mass divided by the volume, all right? So this is a golf ball, so we can think of this as a sphere, and what's the formula to find the volume of a sphere? All right, so it's B, the volume of a sphere is four over three pi r cube. All right, four over three pi r cube. All right, so, so let's find the volume first because we already know what the density is. The density is the 0 0.6523, and we can find the volume using this formula and then we can simply plug in information in this formula here to find the mass. All right, so the volume of a sphere is four over three multiplied by pi. I'm gonna use pi to be 3.14 times the radius, uh, where the diameter is 1.680, so the radius, is gonna be the 1.680 divided by two. Because remember, the radius is always half of the diameter, all right? So if I take the 1.680 divided by two, I get 1.680 divided by two. Let's make sure I get 0.84, um, of course, cube, all right? Says so the radius cube, all right? So when I put this in my calculator, I get 3.14 times four divided by three, I get 2.4814408, all right? That's my volume. So my density, Formula is density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. So the density we already know is 0 0.6523. That's equal to the mass that we don't know. That's what we are trying to find. 
divided by the volume, which is 2.4814508. So if I cross multiply here, so the mass is now equal to this 2.4815408 multiplied by the 0 0.6523, 0.6523, and you will get um, 1.618652496, all right? And so they wanted to um, give you an answer to the nearest hundredth of an ounce, all right? So as you can see, the mass here is going to be 1.62, which is going to be choice two. All right, so question 14 is choice two. Okay, <clears throat> let's move on to question 15. All right, so um, Charles here is sitting eight feet from the foot of a tree. All right, so from where she is sitting, the angle of elevation of her line of sight to the top of the tree is 36 degrees. If her line of sight starts 1.5 feet above ground, how tall is a tree um, to the nearest foot? All right, so let's say Chelsea is here and she is um, eight feet from the foot of a tree, all right? So let's see, this is a tree here. All right, and this is the foot of the tree, of course, on the ground. And she's eight feet from the tree, all right? From the foot of the tree. And it says from her, where she is sitting, that the angle of elevation of her line of sight to the top of the tree is 36 degrees. And it said, if her line of sight starts at 1.5 feet above the ground, all right? 1.5 feet above the ground. So our line of sight is gonna be here. But well, that's the horizontal line, but our line of sight looking up to the top of the tree is 36 degrees, all right? But it's, the line of sight starts from 1.5 feet above the ground, all right? And so now, um, how tall is a tree? So as you can see here, this is a right angle triangle here, okay? All right, so we can call this H. Now, the height that we're calculating here is actually the height from here to here, to the top of the tree. But of course, the height has to come from the ground. So we're gonna calculate the H first, and then add whatever we get to the 1.5. This is also 1.52 as well, okay? Because this is a rectangle here you're looking at. Okay. And the opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. So if we can calculate this H here using um, uh, so called toe, all right? In this case, it's going to be tan, all right? Then we can add this H to the 1.5. So what I'm saying is that the, the, the height. The, 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 the height of the, um, how tall is a tree, so let's call it um, T, is gonna equal to H plus 1.5. So we need to find H first, all right? So this is the angle here, so this is gonna be the opposite side, all right? If this is eight, this is also eight two as well. So it's opposite over the adjacent, all right? So it'll be tan of 36 degrees, is equal to the opposite H over the adjacent eight. So if I cross multiply here, H is equal to eight, multiplied by tan of 36, All right? So using my calculator, 36 tan, multiply by eight, it's gonna give me 5.8123, all right? And so we're gonna add that, add 1.5 to this. So 5.8123 plus 1.5, that should give us the, the height of the, the tree, all right? 
Appreciate it. Um, I said, the, want to give your answer to the nearest foot. So the answer, when you add this, you should get um, 7.3, 2, 3, and so forth. All right? But you want to answer to the nearest foot. So the answer is, um, choice 2. All right? It'll be 7 um, feet. All right? So question 7, the answer is choice 2. Okay, let's move. Let's move on to um, question 16. So question 16. In the diagram below of right triangle ABC, the altitude CD, right? Intercept the hypotenuse AB at D. All right, so this is the um, the right triangle here, ABC, all right, right angle triangle. And we have CD here intersects the hypotenuse AB at D, okay? Which uh, equation is always true, all right? So I've done this question already. The answer is after the choice one for question 16. And the reason being is that, um, First of all, my answer is AD over AC is equal to CD over uh, BC. And the reason being is that this triangle here, AC, um, ADC, is actually similar to triangle um, CDB. All right? They're similar triangles. All right, because they're right angle triangles, so similar triangles. So if they are similar triangles, we know that they, the ratio of their corresponding sides um, are equal or congruent, all right? So for example, if I take AD, all right, AD divided by um, AC, Right, so, so using this right angle triangle here, ADC. So I take AD divided by AC, right? Then therefore um, CD, right? CD from this right angle triangle here, CDB, right? So CD over um, BC. Right? As you can see that this AC here is an hypotenuse of um, the right angle triangle ADC, and this BC here is a hypotenuse of the right triangle CDB, all right? So CD over BC. So um, question 16 is, uh, is choice one. Okay, let's move on to question 17. Okay. So a countertop for a kitchen is modeled with the dimensions shown below. An 18 inch by 21 inch rectangle will be removed um, for the installation of the sink. All right. So what is the area of the top of the installed countertop to the nearest um, square foot? Okay, so question 17. All right, so now we can find the area of all of this. And let's pretend as if this was not cut out. All right, let's find the area of all of this and then subtract the area of this. So that's, so that's the idea here. Find the area of all of the countertop, all right? without any cutout, and then we subtract the area of the, the, the area that was cut out, all right? And that will give us the area of the sink, um, the area of the, the countertop that is, that, that is also cut out for the sink, all right? So if we do that, let's find the area of all of this first. As you can see that this is actually um, to find the area of all of this, what you can do is to cut this into two rectangles. So you can find the area of the rectangle at the top here. 
this here, this rectangle here, let's call it R1, and this rectangle down here is called R2. All right, so the area of all of this is the area of R1 plus the area of R2. Okay. So as you can see that the area of R1 is uh, the length times the width. So the width is two feet and the length is eight feet. All right, so the area of R1, the area of R1, rectangle one, is equal to two times eight, which is um, 16 square feet, all right? And the area of R2, all right, so it's be, again, this is five feet, all of this here is five feet, and from here to here is two feet, this is two feet too as well. So therefore, from here to here has to be three feet, right? So this rectangle here consists of uh, a length of three feet and a width of two feet. So the area of R2 is going to be um, length times width, right? So it's two times three equal to six square feet. So the total area for the corner top, um, including... Um, this here as well, everything, all right, is going to be R1 plus R2, which is going to be 16 plus 6, which is going to give us 22 square feet, all right. Now we need to subtract the area of the, the sink here. We just subtract that out, out of this to find the area of the countertop, all right, with the sink cut out, all right. So, we are told that this, as you can see, this um, cutout area is a sink, is, is, is also a rectangle as well. So, you can call this R3 if you want. All right. So, as you can see, this, we are told that this is 21 inch and this is 18 inches. All right. So, but so far, our units is in square feet, in, in feet. So, what we can do, we can convert um, this here. All right, into feet. So for example, 21 inch, remember 12 inches make one foot. All right, so we can convert the 21 inch into feet. So take 21 divided by 12. So my calculator is gonna give me 1.75 feet. And I take 18 divided by 12, it's going to give me 1.5 feet. So I convert these inches here into feet, all right? Because they want your answer in um, square um, in square feet, all right? So as I, if you take the, the, the area now of our tree, this uh, rectangle here, is the 1.75 multiplied by 1.5, all right? Using my calculator, it's going to give me 2.625 square feet. All right, so now to find the area of the countertop, all right, so the area of the countertop is going to be the 22 square feet that we got here minus the 2.625. All right, that's going to give us 19.375 square feet. And let's see how they want to the answer here. So as you see, as you can see that they want to the answer question 17 as to the nearest square foot. You can see here to the nearest square foot. So the answer is um, for question 17, the answer is choice four. As you can see to the nearest square foot is 19 um, square feet, all right? So question 17, the answer is choice four. Okay, let's move on to question 18. All 
Okay, so in the diagram below, um, B, C connects points B and C on the congruent sides of isosceles triangle A, D, E. All right? Such that triangle A, B, C is isosceles uh, with vertex angle A. All right? So, um, so D, E, A is... Um, uh, a, D, E is an isosceles triangle. And... This line segment here, BC, um, connects um, on the congruent sides of the isosceles triangle, ADE, such that this is also isosceles too as well. So um, AB is actually congruent to AC, okay? And so if, if AB is equal to 10, and therefore this is going to be 10 too as well, and BD is 5, therefore all of this here is 15, and all over, over here is also 15 as well, okay? Um, DE is 12, all right? What is the length of BC? Okay, so um, with this information that is given to us, uh, we can conclude that triangle ABC is actually similar to triangle ADE, all right? And so because they're similar triangle, we know that the ratio of the corresponding sides are congruent. So we can say, for example, um, AB over um, AD is equal to BC over DE. All right? So AB, which is 10, over AD, which is 15, that should equal to BC, that's what you're trying to find, over DE, which is 12. All right, if we cross multiply here, all right, so we have 15 BC is equal to 10 times 12 is 120. Divide both sides by 15. You can see that BC is actually equal to 120 divided by 15, which is actually eight. All right, so the answer for question 18, is choice three, which is um, eight. Okay, so that's it for this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the video. Also, please consider clicking the notification button so that you can be notified um, of future videos. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.